Hey up everyone and welcome to my BAFTA reaction video. We're just gonna be watching the BAFTAs and reacting to the winners and then afterwards uh, I'll do a quick chat about the winners, the surprises, the shocks, the fashion and yeah then we can have a quick chat about what the winners means for the BAFTAs. Sound good? All right. Let's do it. Got my predictions here. I'll discuss afterwards how many I got right, which ones I got wrong. And yeah, Tom Hiddleston's on the screen right now, so I should really get back to that. <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome to the EE e. BAFTA Film Awards 2024. Yeah. Yes. What a great big bungie this is. You all look amazing in your tuxedos and your fancy dresses. It's like the opening scenes of Saltburn. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't end up like the closing scenes in Salt Park. <laughs> and Emily Blunt action. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'd like just 10% more of the Robert Downey Jr. action. <laughs> yeah. First up is original screenplay. Ooh. It is said okay, first category is best original screenplay. I've gone with Anatomy of a Fall. Let's find out. And the BAFTA goes to Anatomy Yay! Of the Fall. one. The last time I was in London, a woman said to me, thank you, because after I saw your movie, I called my ex, and I told him to go see it to understand why I dumped him. I dumped him. <laughs> <laughs> someone else told me, did you put a mic in my kitchen? <laughs> You never know. They're in a good position now to win the Oscar. The award for special visual effects honors those who Ooh, which is a tough one. Explode. The next one is visual effects. Uh, I've got my Mission Impossible. It's a bit of a bold choice, but it could be maybe Napoleon. We'll see. And it is. And the BAFTA goes to. Poor thing. Oh, what? Oh my god. They went with the big best picture contender. Really? Really? What? Oh my god. Okay. I love poor things, but I thought there were so many other more deserving movies for visual effects than poor things, but maybe they're just gonna go on on poor things now. BAFTA's gonna BAFTA. Okay, wow. Uh, we really wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't either. Please welcome Paul Mescal and Andrew what? Scott. Bloody hell. Sex appeal. <laughs> yes, Ireland. <laughs> it's either going to be The Boy and the Heron or Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. I've gone with Across the Spider Verse, but yeah, it feels like 5149 right now. Let's find out. The Boy and the Heron. Ooh! <laughs> Got it wrong, but congrats. One of the most memorable films from the year was Saltburn. What can I say about Saltburn? They were good at keeping clean. One does a dance at the end while his clothes are in the wash. <laughs> Singing, murder on the dance floor. It's the brilliant Sophie Ellis Baxter! Yes! It's a man on the dance floor. Yay! Always happy to be there, so feel as next to Oh! Barry Keoghan just blew her a kiss. So next up is Outstanding Debut by a British writer, producer or director. I've gone with Molly Manning Walker for How to Have Sex. Uh, let's find out. And the BAFTA goes to Earth Mama. Oh! Another shocker! Best Adapted Screenplay. I've gone with Poor Things. I can see this going so many different directions, honestly, so... <laughs> I'm not sure right now. I'm <laughs> really not sure. Oh god, if all of the strangers wins, I'll be so happy. That's not good. <laughs> it needs to win something. <laughs> I predicted poor things, but I want all of the strangers. The BAFTA goes to... American Fiction. Whoa! Seriously? What? The only nomination it got, and it actually won. Wow! That's crazy. <laughs> that was the only one I was certain wasn't gonna win here. <laughs> what do I fucking know? <laughs> That's insane! I mean, congrats to him. Well deserved. 
Oh my god, wow. Shocker! Please welcome the sensational Gillian Anderson. Gillian. Oh, I love that dress. She looks lovely. Okay, next up is Best Supporting Actor. Uh, this one feels like a gimme. I think it's going to Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. But after the last few categories, I don't know what to expect now. This has been kind of a topsy-turvy BAFTA so far. Okay, here we go. Come on. RDJ. RDJ. The BAFTA goes to Robert Downey Jr. Phew! Good, good, good. Alright, we're still on track for that Oscar. Back to winner Robert Downey Jr. Nice. Chris Nolan suggested I attempt an understated uh, approach as a last ditch effort to perhaps resurrect my dwindling credibility. <laughs> so, I share this with my fellow nominees. Oh. He gives a good speech, doesn't he? Right, you want to see him on that stage accepting an Oscar. It's gonna happen. For, it's gonna happen. Time for supporting actress. Oh, to back to back. Past BAFTA winner. He is the writer, star, and director of the upcoming film Rogue Peace. Please welcome the ridiculously talented Chuatel Ejiofor. Ridiculously talented. One and only Adele Dazim. Chummington Ejiofor. Okay, so next up we have uh, Best Supporting Actress. Uh, I've gone with the momentum and predicted Divine Joy Randolph. Part of me thinks, could there be a surprise here? Maybe someone British wins it here? Claire Foy? Emily Blunt? Don't know. Uh, but yeah, I would love to see Claire Foy win. Like, she would be the person I would pick if I had a ballot. But uh, yeah, Divine's probably gonna win, but yeah, we'll find out in a second. The BAFTA goes to Dave Yay! <laughs> Lovely. Divine and Downey both continue their sweeps. It feels like inevitable now that they're going to win those Oscars. It's the leading actor and actress categories that are up in the air still. BAFTA winner Divine Joy Randolph. You are so handsome. <laughs> She's like, all right. Paul Giovanni. Oh gosh, I cry every time I say your name. <laughs> you represent everything that is true and good about this craft. Your generosity, curiosity, and rigor inspires me every day on that film. Oh I am God. proud to call you a friend and thank you for never wavering and being you. She's probably helped Paul Giamatti win the Oscar now, I think, with that speech. Mm. Yeah. Reaffirming his professionalism, his character, his work ethic. Oh my god. Everybody, please give it up for Mr. Swallow! Thank you. Oh my love. Thank you. What is this? So helpful. And my name is Mr. Swallow. Right. On that note, that's me done. You're all doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Good night. What was that? Why? Why did we need that? What was the point of that? It was so pointless. Why was he on skates? Contributions to us. Guess all the Ted Lasso stars get their own segment. I think of you. Wish you'd not have done it. You sassy bitch. My god, just taking a moment to appreciate how gorgeous Dua Lipa looks, but now we're on to outstanding British film. Um, this will probably go to poor things, that's why I predicted, but if it goes to all the strangers, I'll be so happy. The Dark Horse is out of interest, but let's find out. You think you're so great because you have both! <laughs> that's the clip they used for Napoleon? Really? And the BAFTA goes to... The zone of interest. Whoa! There you go! The Brits got behind Jonathan Glazer. Okay, we're on to directing now, and if this doesn't go to Christopher Nolan, there is going to be outrage, okay? Umpa lumpa. <laughs> Don't put it D. <laughs> now the best director category. <laughs> 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 
My agent made me say it. The BAFTA goes to Christopher Nolan. Yes. <laughs> Woo! About damn time. Have you won a BAFTA before? Never. He's never won a BAFTA. He's never won an Oscar. Oh my god. Awards presented Oscar earlier. Included. So these didn't make the cut. Film not in the English language. And the BAFTA goes to? Not me before. The zone of Ooh! Casting. Okay. Susan Sharpmaker. Oh, the whole over. The whole over's got some more. Editing. Oppenheimer. Jennifer Lane. Oppenheimer. Yay! Cinematography. Voight van Hoytner. Voyter van Hoytner. Yay! Documentary. Three Days in Maripol. The BAFTA goes to... 20 Days in Maripol. Yay! Original score, Ludwig Gordonson. Ludwig Gordonson. Yay! Oh, Indeed. Okay, um, hey, so it's Rising Star, voted by the public. I've gone Jacob Bellordi, but who knows? Who knows? My theory for Jacob Bellordi was he was the only one of this bunch that was also nominated in a competitive acting category back to this year. So I thought, yeah, is that going to give him an edge? I don't know. Is he the most popular? We'll find out shortly. And the award. Goes to oh my God. Mia McKenna Brooks. Oh! oh, more awards. How many of these did they skip? Sound. Oppenheimer or the Zone of Interest? The battery goes to the Zone of Interest. Oh my God! Yeah, they're going for it. Production design. Four things. Pretty short film. Jellyfish and Lobster. Oh, short animation. Birthday! Oh. Damn it, should have gone with the animal name. Poor things. No for Barbie then. No show for Barbie. Oh, makeup and hair. Poor things. Oh! Okay, so we're on to best actor. Is it gonna go to Killian Murphy or Paul Giamatti? I've gone Killian. So if Paul Giamatti wins this award, then I would say the Oscar is as good as his. If Killian Murphy wins, then we will have a race going into Oscars night. Uh, but yeah, Killian Murphy needs to win it in order to have a shot at the Oscar. And the winner of the BAFTA for best Killian. actor Killian. Killian, 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 Killian. Killian Murphy. Yes! We still have a race. We still have a race. Actress to present it. The star oh, of this is a big one. And also the dream in which she becomes my best friend. It's in for Selma. Woo. All right, best actress. This is a big one. Uh, if it goes to Emma Stone, absolutely deserved. If it goes to Sandra Hula, it makes the race so much more interesting. Uh, I hope it's Sandra Hula, but I'll be happy if it's Emma Stone. The Here we go. The goes to Emma Stone. Oh! Yeah. Well, she's probably going to take on that second Oscar now. Good for her. I just want to start by thanking our, our dialect coach, Neil Swain, because um, I was playing a British person in this movie, um, and he did not laugh at me when he taught me how to say water. Even though, as an American, I say it like, wow. Uh, that means a lot, so thank you, England. Um, I, Tony, thank you for the line, I must go punch that baby. It's life changing for me. Um, I won the best film now. Uh, yeah, last award of the night. Is it going to go to Oppenheimer? Feels very likely. It's won a lot of awards so far. Uh, this would just be the cherry on the cake for it. Uh, but yes, I uh, think it's going to be Oppenheimer, watching out for poor things, and also uh, Anatomy of a Fall. But yeah, here we go. Last one. Best film! And the best to go to... Oh, I can read it. Oppenheimer. Yay! It goes to Oppenheimer. This film is unstoppable. Probably gonna be our best picture winner now. All right guys, the 2024 BAFTAs are over and I am <laughs> sad to say, I did appallingly at this uh, BAFTAs. I got 
more wrong than I did right. I got 11 out of 25. That is one of my worst uh, years I've ever had at the BAFTAs. Like, they just did not go for uh, the films that I thought they were gonna go for. Uh, so yeah, the big risks that I took, like Sandra Hula for Best Actress, didn't pay off, sadly. Um, I mean, I was right in that Oppenheimer got the most wins. I was predicting around eight, I got seven in the end. Uh, but yeah, it did very well. That was the biggest winner of the night, Oppenheimer. Seven uh, prizes, got best film, it got best actor, best director, supporting actor, and then it got like a bunch of uh, tech stuff, like cinematography, editing, uh, score. Uh, it didn't get sound actually, uh, which brings me into the Zone of Interest, which did very well. I wasn't predicting the Zone of Interest to get anything. So it got sound, it got film not in the English language, and best British film as well, which is very funny that, you know, a British film also won for film not in the English language, but yeah, they just, they really love that film and Jonathan Glazer did very well here, so good for him. I mean, I'm also very happy that it won sound. I do love the sound design in, um, in, in The Zone of Interest, uh, but yeah, I did think it was gonna go to Oppenheimer. I thought they were really go all in on that. Poor Things did pretty well. It got five, that was the next biggest winner of the night. Uh, biggest prize was for Emma Stone for Best Actress, and then it won Production Design, Costume Design, Hair and Makeup, and I also got Visual Effects, uh, Special Visual Effects. That was a bit of a head scratcher. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I thought literally any one of the four other nominees uh, would have been like a, a better recipient. But no offense, I still like Poor Things a lot. I love it. I just didn't, I don't really think of the visual effects when I think of Poor Things. I've just, I've seen other more impressive displays of visual effects this year. But yeah, it, it won the BAFTA anyways. It's not gonna win the uh, the Oscar, obviously, because it's not nominated there. The Holdovers got two awards. It got Supporting Actress for Divine Joy Randolph, and it also got um, the casting as well. Casting is always that tough category. I went, I thought it was gonna go to Anatomy before, and I'm going to, um, to the Holdovers. Um, and then, yeah, a few other surprises. The Best animated feature went to um, The Boy and the Heron, not Spider-Verse, uh, I got that wrong. Best short film went to Jellyfish and Lobster, not uh, Yellow. Anatomy of Four got one win, which was the best original screenplay, which I got that right. So I was happy it won something. I was hoping it get um, Best Actress for Sandra Hula. But no, Emma Stone won there, and I do think, yeah, she's uh, pretty much on track now to win that second Oscar. I, I'm happy for it. I love her in both things. It makes a lot of sense. I was just kind of hoping to see Sandra Hula acknowledge one place somewhere over award season and BAFTA seemed like the most likely place for it. But no, they still went Emma Stone. And like I said, absolutely deserving. I'm happy for her. Uh, she gave a great speech as well. She's effortlessly charming Emma Stone. It feels like best actors might be the hardest one to call now. Uh, as opposed to Best Actress. Unless Lily Gladstone pulls off a win at SAG, it does feel like Emma Stone is gonna go all the way and win the Oscar. Uh, that's how I'm feeling at the moment. But yeah, with Best Actor, it really does, we still do have a race on our hands. It's coming down to Paul Giamatti and Killian Murphy. They've both got pros and cons working for them. Uh, so yeah, that, that feels like it's the hardest race to determine now. The two supporting categories went to who we thought, Divine and Robert Downey Jr. Both did, uh, both got the BAFTAs, both did great speeches. They're probably gonna go all the way. They're just collecting just every trophy of this award season. They are sweeping. Yeah, there were a bunch of big films at BAFTA that got zero recognition, like Barbie didn't get anything. I thought it might get the production design win, just that, you know? Uh, but no, that went to poor things. Uh, Maestro didn't win anything. Some people were predicting to get hair and makeup. I mean, I didn't, but I thought maybe it, it could still do it. Killers of the Flower Moon also didn't win anything either. It had a chance to maybe win in best casting, but no, that went to the holdovers. And probably the thing that upsets me the most is that all of us strangers also walked away empty-handed. It had six nominations, didn't get anything. I was really hoping to see it pull off a win somewhere, like in screenplay or casting. Just didn't happen. I'm really gutted for all of us strangers because it's such a special, beautiful film and it deserves some, you know, BAFTA recognition uh, and sadly just didn't happen. So yeah, I'm a little bit good for that. Who gave the best speech? Um, I found something very charming about Mia McKenna Bruce winning the Rising Star category. She was so charming in that, just, uh, just, just really real and just really lovely and just like genuinely happy that she won and surprised as well. So yeah, good for her. I thought Jacob Elordi was gonna win there, didn't happen, uh, but I'm glad we got to get Mia McKenna Bruce on the stage and that was a very lovely speech. So good for her, congrats to her. Who was best dressed tonight? 
Uh, I thought June Giovanni looked lovely, and I also thought Gillian Anderson looked gorgeous when she presented an award. But I also really loved Emma Stone's dress uh, with the big sleeve, the orange dress, like it, almost like it was like paying homage to Bella Baxter and uh, Hannah Waddingham's costumes in uh, Poor Things. That was a nice little touch. Love that. The biggest surprises, I would say. Uh, I actually did think um, Claude Jefferson winning the best adapted screenplay was a surprise. Genuinely, I, out of all the nominees, I thought he was the least likely to win. Uh, just because American Fiction only got one nomination, I thought, oh, it's a, an American satire. I don't think the BAFTAs are really gonna, you know, go for it. And there were just so many more, like, you know, Britishy films in there, like uh, All of Us Strangers and Poor Things. And yet they, they went with uh, the American satire, which was kind of a, a head scratcher. Not saying he's not deserving, he's absolutely deserving. Congrats to him. It's just, I, I was kind of blindsided by that because I was like, no, nope, that's the one that, that they're not going to give it to. They won't go for Cord Jefferson. They'll give it to any one of the other four, but they went for Cord Jefferson. It's like the universe is just like, oh, we're going to put you in your place, Luke. <laughs> you call yourselves an awards predictor. <laughs> other surprises would be uh, the Zone of Interest winning best uh, English film over Poor Things and All of Us Strangers. I thought, uh, yeah, Poor Things seemed like the most logical pick because it's the most, it was more nominated than the sort of interest at both BAFTA and um, the Oscars. Uh, I thought it was seen by more people, more of a crowd pleaser as well. Yeah, also Poor Things is win for visual effects. It, it was a surprise to me. I, that's another one where I was like, any one of the other four are gonna win this, not, <laughs> not Poor Things. And yet they went with the film that was probably the most seen out of the bunch because it was nominated for Best Film and Best British Film and all that. So, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised they went with, uh, with Poor Things for Visual Effects. What did I think of the show overall? I think David Tennant did a good job. It was a very engaging host. Had a few zingers in there. I, we had two Ted Lasso stars come out and do different segments. One was uh, Hannah Waddingham doing a very lovely uh, song of Time After Time as they did the awards tribute thing. Still a little mad they didn't put Matthew Perry in the tribute uh, section um, on the screens. That was a little uh, short-sighted. But then, yeah, Nick Mohammed comes out and does this character on roller skates in a sequin tuxedo. I'm like, what is this? We, we don't have time to like, you know, watch production design and editing and cinematography give their speeches, but we've got time for Nick Mohammed to wheel around like a prick on the screen and like do these really unfunny jokes. Um, I don't understand what was the point of that. Who was that for? Was that for the audience? Was that for the crowd in the Royal Festival Hall? Was that meant for us? I, I don't know what that was for. It feels very misjudged. Yeah, that, that was probably the weirdest moment of the night uh, for me. Um, I, don't, I don't know who <laughs> thought that would be a good idea. Uh, that was just cringe. It was cringe, sorry. I would much rather that was cut out of the televised broadcast and we actually got to see some people, you know, go up and give their speeches, like for production design, costume. So what do I think the BAFTA winners mean for the Oscars? Well, um, with adapted screenplay, it is interesting. I do think Cord Jefferson's in a stronger position now because he has won at BAFTA and I think it was the Critics' Choice Awards. But it'll be interesting now that Barbie has moved to adapted. Uh, will Barbie be bigger and more popular than Cord Jefferson's um, uh, American fiction? I'm not sure. It's going to be a tough race to call uh, Best Adapted Screenplay, I think. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. With Best Original Screenplay, yeah, it feels more of a dead set. That feels like the easier of the two to predict. Original feels more like it is going to be uh, anatomy of a fall now because it's won the Golden Globe and it's won uh, the BAFTA. So it's in a prime position to take uh, the Oscar. Uh, best film, yeah, Oppenheimer's just comfortably out ahead. Uh, it'll be a big gag if, um, if, it, uh, if it were to lose at this point now. Uh, best director feels guaranteed for Christopher Nolan, but we know that for a while. Best actor is definitely the toughest race of the acting categories to call. It's gonna come down to Jim, Marty, and Murphy. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, the two supporting actor and actress categories, they feel pretty assured now. Downey Jr. and Divine Joe Randolph, yeah. So it kind of feels like our three actor winners are gonna be Divine, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Emma Stone. And then it's just who's gonna be the lead actor that joins the quartet. Animated feature is gonna be an interesting one to call because The Boy and the Heron has won the Golden Globe and it won a BAFTA. So yeah, is it gonna be winning at the Oscars too? It'd be crazy to think that uh, Across the Spider-Verse would lose at the Oscars. It feels very much like something that they would go for but maybe the wind is in the boy in the heron sails, who knows? Uh, but I feel like there's just more love for um, 
uh, the Spider-Verse movie, but we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I do have to take that into consideration now that The Boy and the Heron has won a couple of substantial awards. Some people have been asking me, can Barbie still win costume design and production design? Um, I mean, it's, it's not going to be uh, an easy call to predict Barbie and easy of those, but I still think Barbie can win in both those categories. Like, it does feel like a film that the Academy would want to champion. Uh, somewhere, if it's not in song, then somewhere else. Maybe production design costume, maybe all three, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Poor Things is in a very strong position to win at the Oscars as well because it won you know, the Pro Production Design Guild and it's won the BAFTA as well. And costumes, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> it's just got the momentum right now. So Poor Things uh, is definitely in a stronger position to win uh, production design and costumes, I'd say, but I do think Barbie can still uh, win there. I wouldn't rule them out yet. Oppenheimer is most likely going to take home editing, cinematography, score. Sound is a bit of a question mark. It did lose to the zone of interest at BAFTA. Not sure if that will carry over at the Oscars. I feel like maybe they'll still go for Oppenheimer at the Oscars, but yeah, um, it's definitely poised to take home the most Oscars on Oscars night as well, just like I did at BAFTA. But yeah, that's currently where I'm at with uh, the BAFTA winners and how I think it's gonna influence the Oscars. I will be doing some more content on the channel soon, some deep dives into the categories like the acting categories, uh, best picture. Yeah, so I'm gonna do some nice deep dive discussions for you guys on the channel. So if you don't miss that, do click subscribe, turn on the bell if you wanna get notified. And yeah, do let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of this year's BAFTA winners? Who are you surprised by? Who are you happy about? What do you think it means to the Oscars yourselves? Whatever you have to say, please do let your voice be heard in that comment section down below. If you have enjoyed the video, help me out with a little thumbs up button for more movie TV and Oscars related content. Don't forget to click subscribe. And uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and the BAFTAs and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Kefield, and I'll see you next time. Okay, no popcorn, saying goodbye. Bye!